Well, good morning from Bethany Christian Church. Do you remember we used to have postcards where it said, having fun, having a great time, wish you were here? Well, we truly are having a great time. We do wish you were here. Hey, we got Bo with us today. Gary's here sitting with me. We got Ruth sitting right over there. And we even have another visitor today. It's Bubba himself. And so he's, he is just ready to help us out here today. We're just glad to be here. And you know what? Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord and being a child of the Lord? We're going to do a couple songs for you, a couple oldies. You know those oldies, but goodies. And so we're going to kind of, how do we say this in a nice way? We're going to rock for Jesus this morning, all right? We're going to start out with uh, leaning on the everlasting arms. Okay, Ruth.
today. We thank you, Lord, for such a God who cares so much for us. No matter what's going on in the world, we know that God is always with us, never leaves us, nor forsakes us. Lord, help us always put our confidence, put our trust, put our faith in God. And Lord, and even when clouds come and darkness is there, we know for sure with confidence that Jesus, the light, always shines. Lord, help us to not only understand that, but to walk in that every single day. Walk in the light of the Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. And again, it's that special time during our service to where we honor God and are proud to be able to come and to sup with him. So we hope that you have all your emblems, your bread, or your cracker, and your juice handy for you. You know, uh, this week I was listening to a sermon and I thought, have you ever, let me start over, let me, have you ever had a sermon and you've heard it, you've read scripture, and then all of a sudden you hear something? That happened to me this week. Not the first time, but it happened again this week. And the preacher was talking about how the disciples were hiding. They were scared after the crucifixion. And they were huddled up. And do you remember what Jesus said when he first appeared to the disciples? Peace. It got their attention. And then he spoke again. Peace be with you. And they were in the light. And you know, in this time that we're in, isn't it good to know that that's what God wants with us? Is to have peace and for his peace to rest upon us. I know I do. And I guess that's why it had new meaning to me this week. You know, I've been a little anxious My daughter working at the med, my son working at a restaurant, they're out in the public where they can may end up with the virus. But God wrapped me with his peace. This morning, as I was coming over here, Romans 14, excuse me, 15, 13 came to my mind. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That just flooded me. Knowing what we were going to do over here, coming and having church, being able to have communion. I've got that peace. I know who's in charge. Let's pray. Most loving, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you again for this bread. Your body taken to the cross by love, love for all believers. Father, you didn't have to go, but you went. You went to secure a place for me and for all believers. Father, I thank you for that. I 
thank you for the peace that I received knowing that and knowing that you were resurrected. You're no longer in that grave, but you're ready to intercede for me and for all believers if and when my day comes. Father, we thank you. It's in your son's holy name. Amen. So thankful that you came into the world, took on a human form, walked among us, teaching and preaching. More than that, carried your cross to Calvary, shed your blood. For our sins and father that is something that we truly remember we remember the sacrifice that you gave for the sins of the world and we are so thankful now let's ask that you would bless this cup that we're about to receive that it might be a means by which we gain spiritual strength to go into a world that so desperately needs to know about you and what you did for us. We thank you and we remember. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Well, good morning. Here we are again, 
And you know what? I was looking at some magazine my wife had at home, and it was showing us what is in fashion for this spring. You know, what, what clothes those who are in was wearing. But then I went to Kroger, and this was what was in. Never would I have imagined that I'd be at Kroger wearing rubber gloves or a face mask, but this spring, this is what's in <laughs> all throughout America. And it reminded me of while I was there uh, watching others around me, how such a time as this, the, the things that have changed in, now in this world, and it reminded me of the book of Esther. And in Esther, there's a situation that comes up where uh, it, it's a crisis, and it's a crisis that's going to affect all the way up to the, to the king's uh, palace itself, me and Esther, me and Esther. And so we come to chapter 4, and in chapter 4, Esther's uncle Mordecai sends her a message saying, there's a law that has been uh, ordained that all Jews will be annihilated. Well, if you read in chapter 4, you see Esther did not know about this because she had been in isolation. Does that sound familiar to you? Isolation? For the last 30 days, she had been in isolation. She hadn't heard, heard anything about this. But at that point, when she does hear about this, she gives us some things that we can use now for us in this time, this such as time as this, that will help us maybe go through in, in, in this time here. Uh, and Esther says, uh, in such a time as this, first of all, she says to her uncle, I'm going to fast for three days. All my maids and I will fast, and I want you to go and tell all the others uh, to fast, all the Jews there to fast. And in the Old Testament, the word fast in there doesn't just mean not to eat, but it also meant praying also, and praying to God. And this is an interesting book, Esther, because the word God is never used in it. But from all the way from verse 1 to the end, you see God working. That's called the providence of God. And so we see that now, in this time where we're at right now. Uh, I've read and heard some and listened to others say that this is judgment of God upon you know, America or the world. Well, I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know this, that how can something be worldwide going on and God not use it? for his glory or for his purpose. And so, we're going to tie in what Esther does here and what she's doing about this with the providence of God going on uh, and how we as Christians can handle this right now. And so, first thing she does is she realizes or she recognizes that there's a purpose for whatever's going on in our lives. God doesn't just do anything haphazardly or, or get surprised about it. There, there's a purpose for it. And one writer said, never doubt God's timing for the events in your life. That he's right there, always working in your life. Uh, the story of our life, or, or the making of our life, has not been completely written yet. God is still writing the story of your life in these events. And he wants to see how we, how we respond, how we react, or what we do in these times. Uh, for myself, personally, and I'm sure some of you, what a great time we've had, even in isolation, where we've said before, but God can, now we can hear God, we can hear what He has to say to us, uh, like uh, Bo was kind of in that earlier, and we can also not only hear what God has to say for, uh, to us and get in our attention, but we can study and start really looking at what is God going to do with us after this is, you know, things start getting to back what we were saying earlier, to the new normal or the normal. Uh, and so we, we look at our faith, we look at our hope, uh, like Romans 15, 13 was saying. And also we look at what purpose God has for us at this time. Because we are here, we are alive, and we are at where we are at this time in, in our life and in this time in, in history for a purpose. And, and Esther is realizing that there is a purpose for God and what's her reasoning, or how is God going to use her? And so we can recognize and realize ourselves, how is God going to use us in such a time as this? 
as a church and as individuals. We have lost friends, we have lost family, we have uh, lost neighbors or, or lost uh, co-workers or those who are confused maybe or those who don't know really what to expect next. How is God going to use us in this time uh, such as this? What a great opportunity we have and so God is preparing us for this. We, none of us know what's going to happen even tomorrow, what, what's going to happen next month or whatever, but God is preparing us. And just like Esther here said, I'm going to take three days and fast and pray, she's letting God prepare her for what He has planned for her or what He has for her to do. So all of us, what a great time for that. There's no hustle and bustle. I don't have to get to work or get to whatever. Uh, I, I, I take uh, every three weeks and go to the supermarket with my face mask and my gloves and I stand in line and uh, I watch others. I love watching people uh, when there's chaos going on, see what's going on. But then we can also get the peace of God in our own hearts there at that time. So we see it's a, it's a great time for us, such a time as this, for God to prepare us for something He's going to, going to be doing with us. So Esther re realizes, and she, she not only realizes it, she takes and goes to the throne of God. I love in Hebrews chapter 4 where it says that we can come boldly to the throne room of God and get whatever we need, grace or mercy. And so right now, we need grace, maybe we need mercy, but we need to listen to God and have Him preparing us for what's next. For what, for what battlefield He's going to put us in or what, or what situation He's going to allow people to come in our lives or us come into their lives and how He's going to use us in those events. It's a great opportunity. Think about this when we think about that. One day, we may be in heaven with God and someone comes up and says, you know, I want to thank you because I'm here because of what you've done for me during that time when that virus hit the world. You know, for years, I mean, years from now, that's going to be in the history books, hey, about this virus. We're living it. We're living history right now, and we're living God, God's providence of, and purpose of Him working in the background in our lives. So just like Esther, she recognized and realized, hey, there's a purpose going on. And God wants to use her. And also she says, I'm going to pray and receive the answer. You and I need to realize, not only do we recognize it, but we need to receive what God has for us. And we ask, we knock, and we, and we in confidence and, and in readiness. What is it, God, you, you want to give me at this time? You know, is it more knowledge of the scriptures? Is it more love? Is it more obedience? Is it the power going to be needed for the task that, uh, that waits me, awaits me, or is that ahead of me? We know not. We need to be ready to receive whatever it is God has for us. Because there are plenty, and there are many out there who are confused, who are in chaos, they don't know what to do, they don't know where to turn. God's going to give us the answers. God's going to give us the power and the ability. Are we willing to receive that which God is uh, going to give us there with the confidence and readiness to use that. Paul says in the New Testament, uh, whenever there's opportunities to witness or opportunities to be used by God, we need to seize those opportunities and take those. We need to receive those. And so uh, Esther here says, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, she even uses the term, if I perish, I perish. But she says, I'm ready to receive whatever it is, the answer that God's going to give me there. And for each of us, it's different. What, how he's going to use us, how, what he's going to do, uh, it's different for us because we are involved in different people. We, we, we see others that uh, there's some you may see, I never see, some you know, I don't even know, or never will know, but God knows. And he wants us to recognize and receive what he has for you. And a lot of times that comes through whatever spiritual gifts you have or whatever talent you have, you have that God has given you. And he will use those if you, let, if you recognize it and you receive those. 
and you and let God use those. And I think that's the biggest part with most Christians. Are we really willing to receive what God has for us? Because when we receive it, then we can respond. And when we respond, notice she says, I'm going to go to God. And when, when we go to God, then God tells us to go. Go to others. And go to those who, who need Him. Uh, at our church, I always say, we're here for the, for the least, the lonely, and the lost. And if there's anything going on in the world right now, we're going to see the least, the lonely, and the lost. Not only here in America, but worldwide. That's who God sends us out for. But we got to recognize there's a purpose. we got to recognize God uh, uh, has that purpose and a plan, and He wants to use us. Most Christians I deal with, a lot of times, they really don't believe God has a plan for their life. Well, I'm either too old, too young, I never did this, never did that, but God has a plan for all of our lives. Matter of fact, Paul says it in in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that you and I are God's masterpiece. You're a, you know, you, we're all a poem that God is writing, and He's given us form, and He's given us meaning, and we need to understand that, that we're, we're part of God's plan. Every believer is essential to God and part of His plan. And so, whenever we respond to God, and uh, in, in, in going and doing whatever he wants us, he will enable us, he will also enlighten us, and he will encourage us. I love when someone, uh, you know, who is kind of a little frightened about something or, or, or timid, and along comes that person that God really wants to use and says, you can do this. You, you can do it. And he helps give him confidence. Uh, my granddaughter now is trying to learn a bicycle, how to ride a bike. And I keep telling her, you can do this. I'm right there with you. I won't let you fall. And I'm right there long beside you. That's exactly what God is doing this at this time. He's preparing us. He, he wants us to realize that, that he's preparing us. And he also wants us to receive it. And then he uh, responds by saying, you know what? I'm right there with you. I'll help you stay balanced. I'll enlighten you. I'll help enable you. And I will truly encourage you at this time. And so, we, God's pre preparing all us believers. Peter says this in, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Always. I like that word, always, don't you? Always be ready. Just, I mean, you ever think about, just listen to those words right there. Always be ready. So it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a month from now, whenever. We know not. But always be ready. And here's the part I like. For the hope that lies within you. Isn't that something? If God has planned for you, which he does, that somewhere along the line in, in the near future, someone's going to come there, and there you are ready, and you're going to be able to tell them about the hope that lies within you. And they're going to say, hey, how can I have that hope? Well, how do you get that hope? What an opportunity. What? That's your cue, as they say. Your cue to tell them, well, let me tell you what God has done for me. And that's what it's all about. In such a time as this, do we recognize God's got a plan and that God's got a purpose for all this? Are we ready and prepared to receive this? Receive whatever He has for us. Grace or mercy, you know, enlightenment, encouragement, and then how are we going to respond? Do we go to God about others and then we go to others about God? If so, we're understanding what God is telling us. We truly are ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within us. How is God going to use Bethany Christian Church in the future here or in such a time as this? How is He going to use you in such a time as this? I read recently where one writer says, Reality just continues to ruin my life. Well, reality is this. The world's hurting. The world's in chaos. Your neighbors are hurting. Your fellow workers are hurting. Your family's in chaos in some ways, and they're hurting. In such a time as this, God wants to use you. You need to realize it, 
Receive what God has for you and respond for the hope that lies within you. Let's pray. Father, we come now. We thank you for this time. Lord, help us to be like Esther. We know, Lord, that there's something going on. And we realize it, but there's a purpose for it. Paul says, all things work for the good for those who love God according to his calling and his purpose. Lord, help us in all things to realize, Lord, that your plan is there. And you have a plan and you want to use us. Think about this. The God who created all the universe and all things has a plan and he wants to use you in that plan. When we realize that, recognize it, when we receive what it is that God has for us, we will truly respond with the way God wants us to and telling the world and telling those around us and wherever we go of the hope that lies within us in such a time as this. Lord, help us understand that. In such a time as this, we need Jesus. They need Jesus. And he wants to use us to tell them. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, I want to remind you that if you need us here at Bethany Christian Church, feel free to call the church, call the elders, call myself, and we'll be glad to help you with your prayer requests. We're praying for you every day. And I pray you're praying for one another. God's Word tells us not only to pray for one another, but encourage one another. And you, you can do that even in your prayers. And we just thank you for this time. I thank you for all those who are here today. Again, Bo, Bubba, thank you, and, and, and Ruth and Gary. Uh, you know, I've only been here a short time, but I miss them. You know, I miss seeing them, hanging around with them. And so, and I hope they miss me, because, and we truly miss you. Amen. And we want you to know that we truly miss you. And uh, we don't know when God's going to raise us back all together at church. But whenever it is, oh, happy days. And we just ask and pray, Lord, that you keep us all safe and, and bring us all back together again. Let's pray one more time. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for a God who loves, loves us, loves our church, Lord, and wants us to know that he loves us. Lord, we ask that we pray for one another, care for one another, and think about one another, Lord. Just uh, look forward to when we can see one another. And we thank you for this day. Lord, we, we ask that you help us in all things that we truly show the love of God in our life. And whenever we can, Lord, see others and talk to them and they seem in trouble or or, or chaotic or confused, Lord, let us tell them about Jesus, how he can give them the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we just thank you until, until next time. In Jesus' name, amen.